All right, I think we'll go ahead and kick things off. So uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, so I think we have one new guy here tonight. So if you're new, I would like to just you know have you introduce yourself to everybody. Just give us your name, your major, uh, year, and then just something interesting about yourself or you know why you're here or why you're interested in cybersecurity. So my name is Derek. I'm a second year IT major in cybersecurity and computer networking. And I'm here just to learn about more cybersecurity things that my classes aren't covering or haven't covered yet. Cool. All right. Awesome. Well, hopefully uh, we can give you some interesting insight to some hands-on tools tonight on direct reconnaissance, specifically social engineering toolkit. I'm going to be doing a little demo on that for everybody that has Cali. Um, so we have some ongoing projects since you're new here. Um, I'm working on a malware sandboxing lab, cyber range, rapid cyber operations center. Um, we've procured roughly $2 million in donations uh, to the University of Cincinnati. have been a big part of that. And we're going to be building the first cyber range in the state of Ohio, first of five. Um, when that's going to happen, I got no clue because UC is real slow, but that's ours. We got a big name. Uh, a bunch of other colleges have been talking about it. So that's, that's pretty awesome for UC. We're, we're becoming the place to be if you want to learn about cybersecurity. Um, number two, we have roughly $200,000, or uh, actually, I talked to Franco, a quarter of a million, he said, so maybe a little over $200,000 uh, worth of equipment coming uh, within the next two months. And that's going to be set up in our lab at 516 ERC, which is now allocated for a chapter. It just needs to be cleaned out. Funny enough, the last students that were in 516 ERC, the operating systems uh, lab or whatever, they left like bags of clothes and a bunch of other crap in there. So they got to clean all that out, put new carpet in. I'm asking for a 240 volts uh, outlet to be put in there for a nice UPS. And it'll be awesome when we get that. I talked to Kahay today and he's saying maybe another month, but we've been waiting on this for a long time. But hurry up and wait, I guess, is the way it's, it's going to be. Um, so I guess I'll have a few announcements. What's up, man? This is uh, Cyber. Yes, yeah. Cyber UC. Here, so I think this is the first time I've seen you too, right? Yeah. What's your name, man? I'm Cliff. So this is Cliff. Could you just tell us like your major and you know why you're interested in cybersecurity? Um, I'm in IT, uh, cybersecurity track, and uh, it's pretty interesting in general. Cool. Well, take a seat anywhere, man. So. Everyone who hasn't introduced themselves to Cliff and Derek, you should probably do so at some point. Um, so, yep, we ran the CTF at Revolution UC. How many guys were there? Yeah, a lot of us. How many guys participated in the CTF? Hey, okay, cool. What was your team, man? Uh, OG Catzilla. OG Catzilla. All right, all right, I see you. I was hoping you were going to say Steph Curry. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Steph, Steph Curry's team had cheated. So I, I was just going over this with everybody a little earlier, but so this is kind of the results of the CTF. We have uh, Hello Drop Table users, which I believe completed every single possible problem on the uh, CTF. And I think, does anyone remember the IPs? 10.6? 63.5.81. Uh, uh, 3, oh, not 300. This was the instances that they were poking around well, that, on. That was used. Try like 3010. If you want to give them like a clean instance that hasn't been started. Well, I am. I, 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 it's whatever, really. But right. Oh my gosh, numpad's not on. Yeah, so, you know, here's pretty much uh, an instance. So they would get this web application and they'd have to like log in. They'd have to find the scoreboard. That's the first step to solving the problem. And then you have all of these different tiers of problems, cross-site scripting, tier one, et cetera, et cetera. And every time you would complete it, you get a flag. You put the flag in here. And there's a, there's a bunch of challenges. Uh, they're going to show me. I'll just do drop table users. Um, so, you know, here's kind of like the content that we went over, everything from like SQL injection to deserialization, uh, a whole lot of stuff in the web apps. And then we had a whole bunch of different things you could take a crack at. So I think it went really good. Um, I hope you guys that participate in it, like learned something or at least thought it was cool. Um, and I hope next year to have something even better. So like I said earlier, lab space has been approved for 516 ERC. It's going to be awesome. 
Um, Monday, we were out at Lakota East. So it was me, Corey, and Ryan here. And we had, a, oh, and Bailey, who's not here. Um, we had a good time, talked to some high school students about cybersecurity, and we got a nice letter of recognition from the uh, professor there, or teacher, and uh, he wants us to come back. So that'll be really cool. Come on, announcements. Uh, yeah, here, Aiden. Hey, hey. So we've been working on this website for the Ohio Cyber Collaboration Committee for a while, and uh, we put together a demo site. You can see a screenshot of the homepage there, and uh, they seem to really like it. Uh, they seem to want to move forward with it. We, originally, they had us using their uh, CMS platform, CMS is Content Management System, and they had us using their weird one called like .NET Nuke, and uh, we pointed out that uh, they hadn't patched it in two years, and they didn't have HTTPS, and so there were a lot of security issues with it, and so we're going to be moving to Drupal now, which is a much, much, much better platform, and uh, we're going to get a bunch of credit for uh, making this website for them, so that's going to be really great. Yeah, and Hayden's doing a great job with that. No, it's kind of funny. Um, Ohio apparently was hosting a lot of their important websites on DNN or using DNN uh, to design their websites. And uh, Hayden pointed out that those versions that they were using may be vulnerable to some remote code executions. And everybody at the state of Ohio government that knew about this proceeded to kind of freak out because all of their websites that they had built using this format are vulnerable. Uh, it's, I think so, they have a few that are updated. It's good. That's good. I can just I, I can't you can't tell the version number of uh if you don't have admin access, so I can only tell on the, the mm -hmm. one server that it was an outdated version, and I can only assume the rest of them are as well. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Who knows? But uh, it's really awesome work. We're really getting good um, good optics from this. Uh, some other announcements before it ends. Um, we have our bank account now, so we've been working to become an official organization for over a year. We're finally official. We now have our tax-free bank account, and we're going to be getting that $1,000 from Northrop Grumman put into that bank account for our CTF team, so we're going to be able to take some awesome trips and do some fun stuff. Um, before I move on, uh, I want to just plug this again. I know I brought this up the last couple of meetings, but some of you guys are new. Um, this is our research application um, for cybersecurity. I believe at Wright State University, they're going to pay you. Um, you're going to get housing at no charge, you're going to get a food allowance, and you're going to get travel funds. It's the National Science Foundation. You can see some of the research topics that we have here. Um, so definitely, if you're interested, give them a shout out. Uh, I think this would be a great opportunity. I would take it myself uh, if I wasn't already busy with other things. So I mean, you guys should totally look into it too. Um, there's ASME eFest. I know I brought this up the last couple of meetings too. April 13th through 15th. I don't think there's any more free tickets, but this is definitely something to look forward to. I might try to get a group of guys and girls going up here uh, to this event. Who knows? Um, anything new from public affairs? Anything new from public affairs? Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, whenever we're ready to do the videos, we'll go forward with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, you're, if anybody's interested in making those videos, please hit me up. Mm -hmm. And so I guess at this point, um, I want to just, for you guys who are new, kind of talk about how we're running this chapter and, and who's basically who does what and how you can get involved with us more. Um, so I'm the president, and my vice president is Ryan O'Connor here. Um, and then I'll have the committee heads kind of introduce themselves. Uh, I'm Corey from the Content Information Committee. Uh, we kind of do uh, basically what's new in cyber this week. Uh, we bring you guys information that we think is really important that you hear. And we're trying to build up uh, sort of some, some of those educational videos Jai was mentioning. Uh, that's going to be a lot of it for us too. So, so and then, we do. Uh, I'm the public affairs head. Uh, I run the social media and uh, stuff to do with like logo, flyers, and uh, stuff like that on our website. And then I'm Ryan Boss, uh, I'm the treasurer and finance committee I think we're missing, missing, Alex Winkler. missing Alex Winkler. He's the head of outreach and yeah. he basically uh, helps us out with reaching out to high schools and leading those things. And uh, we're also missing Greg. But Greg is our head of recruitment and retention, and he's just in charge of putting up things like tabling and fun events like that. So if you guys want to get involved at all, or if you have any interest in any of these sections, uh, feel free to reach out to the heads, and you know we can get you involved, get you a role, and maybe you can put on your resume or something.
Yeah, just with the, the YouTube channel on that, that URL is a little long. If you just go on YouTube and search cyber at UC, you can, it's the first result. And uh, yeah, if you ever can't make it one week, all our, we live stream them all. You can watch back the live streams. Um, so I know like Ryan was saying, he, he has spots at this time, so you can just, that's the case for you, just watch it back and keep up with things. Cool. Thank you, Now we're going to turn it over for our content info section, and then uh, we're going to get into a little bit of a cool cyber sexy exercise like this. So uh, first things first, uh, anyone who's been here before knows uh, Cali is pretty important, at least uh, for, for a lot of the things we like to do here. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Kali is a Linux operating system. Uh, it's really good for uh, penetration testing, especially since a lot of the time it'll come with some really awesome tools like Metasploit, Armitage. Uh, we've got a couple people in here who really like Kali. They can probably name a couple of the really good ones. Um, but basically that's become available as a dis distribution you can get on Windows 10 along with uh, Ubuntu and I'm really not familiar with Suze at Susie. all. Suzy. Uh, but apparently they're really popular according to the article, even though I've never heard of them. Whatever. M they're, um, they're mildly popular. Okay, mildly popular. It's good enough. And, and, and popularity is a, it's a international term. So here they might not be very, very you know, commonly used. Over in Europe, Linux is used more often, and so is Suzy. Yeah. So, uh, for any, so for anyone who's not aware right now, uh, window when they introduced Windows 10, they also added this thing called the Windows Subsystem for Linux. They abbreviate it WSL. Basically, it's uh, this thing on your computer where it can go really low level beneath the Windows 10 operating system, and it and it starts to pretend it's got Linux there. And so, with that, you can now. Uh, before you you would typically get like Ubuntu that you could put on there. Well, now Kali is an option, and you can even get like the Kali desktop environment running on it. So there there's a I basically you you can have Kali now on your Windows machine without just having to make a virtual machine, which sometimes is not necessarily as performant. Uh, the only downs or one of the major downsides though is it doesn't actually come with the the tools that are pre-installed on Kali. So you're kind of, yeah. So you're kind of missing out on the really big benefit there, especially since sometimes Kali will come with tools that are not usually free. Okay. Uh, and another thing is uh, the because it's re a really brand new feature, the Windows Subsystem for Linux has also had a lot of uh, vulnerability problems. If you enable it on your computer, uh, they fixed a lot of that. So you're probably fine enabling it, but I mean that's just opening up one more thing that could potentially be vulnerable on your machine if you do decide to go through with this. Uh, but if you follow that article, it does have demo, uh, instructions and demos on how to go through and do all of this. It looks pretty cool. So. Well, I'd also know that uh, the people that made that uh, Linux subsystem, uh, they it w they were Linux developers. So it wasn't Windows that made that subsystem. That was Linux developers working in conjunction with some people in Microsoft mm -hmm. to enable this functionality because they're trying to prevent people from dual booting systems. Mm -hmm. They want people to stay with Windows systems. So yeah, well, the, 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 the main security problems that I was seeing a lot of the time, it was always because like there was something built into Windows that because of the way WSL works, it kind of goes beneath it. And so it was never actually getting caught by a lot of these built-in security pro processes that are in the operating system. And so they basically just had to, to put those into WSL, stuff, stuff that they didn't really think about. Yeah. Because it's not typically part of Linux, because you've got the full Linux operating system working there. Well, it was just a bash shell, basically, mm -hmm. before the main thing, right? It yep. wasn't a full Linux system. Yeah. It was just a bash shell. Yeah. So you don't have like the, the a lot of the security protections that are typically being afforded by whatever operating system you're running. But it is isolated, fairly isolated, fairly well from Windows. I believe so, yes. The way that they made it. Uh, so this next one, uh, this is an article that kind of goes over three different botnets. Uh, they, they've been uh, kind of getting, uh, they've had, this is just basically the final update on what's been going on with them after they all kind of got caught around the same time. And so they always get talked about at the same time, basically, now. Uh, this first one is Avalanche. Uh, 
The Avalanche Botnet came from the name of the group that created it, the Avalanche Syndicate, even though there's only like five of them. Apparently that's enough to be called a syndicate nowadays. Uh, so the, the leader has been on the run ever since this major cybersecurity crime crackdown that happened in Ukraine back in 2016. It was kind of like a joint effort throughout the EU trying to find these guys because they didn't initially know where they were from really. And so when the officers went in to try and arrest him, he started firing on them with a, with a, a rifle through the door, but they, they managed to mess up his records uh, when they were filing his arrest, and he got released on that technicality, only to be rearrested this past Monday because he they found out he was using a fake passport. So he kind of messed that up. Uh, the next one is going over uh, this Kronos botnet. So this guy, Marcus Hutchins, is uh, going is uh, been charged, and he's about to go undergo trial. He was actually really key in stopping the WannaCry malware. And then they kind of found found out, or at least they believe they found out, that he was actually the developer of the Kronos botnet. Uh, so he, this is heavily disputed, and a lot of the security yeah. community thinks this, he's innocent. Yeah, so there's a lot of people that think he's innocent, including him. But right now the prosecutors are going <laughs> in, and they're saying, yeah, I don't think this is going to take long. Uh, they they didn't actually they haven't released anything yet because the trial hasn't started, but they've cited like we've got a lot of stuff right here and they they seem to think it's gonna be a really quick trial. They've got business records, statements, malware samples, which I feel could be really damning if they do have malware samples that they can trace back to Kronos. Uh, Jabber chats. I don't know if there's actually gonna be anything of value in there. I've not got no clue what Jabber is. Do you have a link for this? I'm actually, I didn't know that they had this evidence on it. Yeah, uh, the the link will be on the next page. Oh, cool. uh, uh, they've got audio recordings and... Jabber's just a chatty. Yeah. yeah. I imagine yeah. it was like him talking to someone on a form. Because we do know he's just got like this malware tech user. Sorry. So, yeah. Uh, this last one is the one I, I'm really interested in of the three. It's called Nanocore. It was developed by this guy, Taylor Huddleston. And he was selling a, uh, a rat he advertised as a rat, but when he was in front of the jury, he was telling them that rat was supposed to mean remote administration tool, <laughs> uh, which, as we all know here, or at least if you're new, you'll, you're about to learn, is remote remote access tool. Or Trojan. But... Or Trojan, but tool is technically what the word is supposed to be, that people just use Trojan all the time. And his, and his defense was, I've never actually used this tool on anyone. I just sold it to people, and I can't be held responsible for what people use my software for. Works for the And so, but uh, he would. They they decided that he would be charged guilty anyways because of where he decided to sell the software. It was. It should have been obvious what his customers would use the software for. Uh, he was selling it on hackforums.net so that that creates a really interesting uh, legal dispute of are you guilty because of what someone uses your software for just because of where you feel you have to sell it so there, there's some interesting uh, moral argument uh, evidently the jury has decided yes yes you are in fact guilty uh, and then this is this is really big uh, just last week, we actually had two record-breaking DDoS attacks occur. Uh, they relied on the same vulnerability to, to do it. And what was happening is they're using uh, an amplification or a, a reflection to amplify bandwidth available in order to DDoS the, uh, a company, which was unnamed in all of these articles, but apparently it was the same company both times that got attacked. Uh, Memcached is an open source software used to distribute memory ca uh, yeah. is an open source distributed memory caching system and so when memcached is being run on these servers people are able to send on port 11211 uh, a request for this for some information and they they spoof their IP address to be the IP address of whatever victim they want to attack and it comes back uh, amplified uh, 51,000 fold, which is uh, pretty significant. And that was how they managed to break these new records. 
and I actually have a lot of sources for this one, including the list of 17,000 servers that were at the time exposed. Uh, this is about a week after the exploit had already been released. So these guys are being pretty slow to fix it, evidently. Either they don't have an easy fix or they just don't know how to get rid of Memcached. I'm not sure. And then there's also the uh, exploit code available on that bottom link as well. Uh, this is the, what was the first apparently record-breaking attack is this third one from the bottom at 1.35 terabits per second, uh, 1.7. Uh, this is a bit more explanation on how this memcached amplification works. And that top one is the an initial article that kind of summarizes the whole thing. So uh, just to kind of go over what this uh, amplification DDoS attack is or a reflection DDoS attack is, basically what I'm doing is I'm sending a request to some sort of server or I might send like a lot of requests. And the reflection is that server instead of is not my actual target. My target is someone else. So, for example, with this exploit, you're pretending you're sending a spoofed IP address of whatever your victim is, so that the server responds by sending all of its responses to your intended victim, which you know maybe you're supposed to do. They're supposed to receive this request once every like 10 seconds for one person, but you're instead sending like 10,000 requests per second for this victim, and so suddenly just all of this information starts flooding at them. That's kind of the idea of how. Uh, reflection works and then the amplification is is the uh, you send this small bit of data and then just a larger amount is sent in response that's the amplification aspect so I send a I send you know 10 bytes and then or I send one byte of data in a request and then 51,000 bytes comes back and now if you scale that up it gets a lot larger so. Crazy. cool so I think we should I think this slide deck's actually updated it should be Refresh it. Um, so I think we're going to be going over our direct reconnaissance. I'm going to refresh this here. Cool. And we'll jump ahead. You guys that are new tonight, I highly, highly recommend you jump on our Slack because um, we use that quite a lot in our meetings for like distributing links and stuff on you know some of the stuff we're working at, and we um, that, that's our main format for communicating when our meetings are and stuff. So we're going to do this direct recon. I have a little hands-on thing here for you guys. So I guess we'll go ahead and we'll get through this fairly yeah, fairly nice and quick. And then if you want to join our Slack, it's ucyber.slack.com. And you can just, as long as you have a, a at mail.uc.edu email address, you can just create an account. All right, this is going to be a continuation of what we did last week, which was indirect recon, which is finding information on a target from external sources. So we're going to go over just kind of what information gathering is again, and then what direct recon is from that. So if you have a Kali Linux distro with you, you might want to go ahead and open that. Just get ready. Um, reconnaissance, again, is the very first step in the ethical hacking process. We are gathering information on our target. Information gathering is the process of gathering useful information on our targets so that, that we can use them later. This can be IPs, yeah. domains, first names, last names, addresses. And, and last week when we went over Google dorking, um, that's, that's a good way to get some of that stuff. Yeah. So the types of inf information gathering are indirect, which is using external sources such as public records, Google hacks, Google dorks. Uh, social medias and job sites. Um, and then there's the direct information gathering, which is when you directly interface with a target. So that can include social engineering and dumpster diving is actually considered direct information gathering. I mean, you could also consider in map port MF, scanning. Yeah. You're probably familiar with port scanning. Yep. Uh, it's direct reconnaissance. Yeah. And there's a couple of tools that will automate all that for us, like Multego and the Social Engineers Toolkit or SCT. So types of information again, um, there's network and systems information, which is what are their computers doing? There's organizational information, which is what are they doing? And then there's security, it is how are they trying to stop us from knowing what they're doing? So like, let me go back to this slide. So like, what is running on the network? How many of you guys have done like a services scan within that, right? 
You know, yeah, so, I mean, that's great critical information. Uh, you can also get what tools are running from that. Uh, and like you said, the organizational, that's a lot of Google dorking, um, job site checking, et cetera. So our direct sources of information will typically include social engineering, which are going to things like job interviews and asking questions that let you know more than they know about you. And sending emails to, say, sales, if you want to know information about a product that they don't release publicly. And you're you say you're interested in buying it, and they'll probably give you more information. Um, site casing, so actually going to a location and then finding information about stuff like that. Websites also count as sites for site casing. So a lot of websites will have a robots.txt file in their root directory. And if they're not configured correctly, that will show you things like admin panels that you shouldn't be able to access. Hmm. Some, some companies are horribly bad about, they just, robots.txt, that's how you tell like Google, like these are the pages I don't want you to look at. Some companies will just list every URL that has private stuff. And then anyone who looks at it is like, oh, cool, thanks for showing me all your secrets. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the things in robots.txt aren't even password protected, and they should be. So that's always fun to check. And then we can enumerate through subdomains once we find a network. So this quick tool, tool warning, we are starting to cover real tools that are built in Akali. Um, just don't use them outside of what we're doing here. This is a safe place, and we all enjoy being able to come here. So please don't abuse anything we go over. So the first tool to go over is Multego. This one's a bit complicated to set up, so we'll probably skip it tonight. Um, basically, it makes graphs like this, and each node on that graph is a piece of information about an entity. And it's basically a intelligence agency that you pay a yearly subscription for, and if you don't believe that, their website is basically Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, yeah. There is a free version built into Kali, but you do have to register on their website to use it, which is apparently more involved than I thought it was. Yeah, you got to register. And yeah. Multega is cool. I haven't played around with it too much just because it has the fee, and you can pretty much figure out how to do a lot of this stuff with open source tools. Yes. It just might not be as smooth lined and pretty as Yep. And then our other tool that we'll go over tonight, there are many more tools than this, all built into Kali. Um, if you go to tools.cali.org, you'll find a big list grouped by section, but these are the main two we'll go over. So the Social Engineers Toolkit is a bunch of grouped together utilities that will let you deploy things like phishing emails, USB attacks, auto run scripts, and um, scripts embedded in PDFs, things like that. So. And, and tonight we're going to be covering, um, and from the Social Engineering Toolkit, how to set up a web credential harvesting site. Uh, it's really, really simple. It's simpler than you might think, and uh, it's cool information. Be cool. All right, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to get up on our Kali distros and we're going to run through this short demo and then we're going to get together in groups of two and we're going to do a little experiment. Um, so let's see here. Uh, can you switch me over? Yeah. yeah. Switch into the. Uh, all right. And if you don't have a Kali Linux distro or a computer with you, just buddy up with somebody that does and uh, work on this together. Um, this will be a fun little short, easy. You know, you can get this done. How many of you guys have worked with Social Engineering Toolkit before? You've worked with it? What have you done on it? Just explored it, really? Cool, cool. All right. So, let's see, we're going to do Control C, and then I'm going to. Let me see if I can blow this up. Is that, is that better at all here? Clear. Gosh. The scaling, when you put it on the... Uh, actually, this would be better. Display. And then... Mirror and unmirror. Apply. Alright, and then we'll do... You might all want to make it full screen a little bit on the side. It's cut off. Okay. One of these days, my goodness. My projectors are like not quite 
16.9, so. All right, that's that's so, so big. You should all definitely be able to see that, hopefully. And if not, I'm sorry. All right, cool? All right. Let me exit out of this. All right. So let's go ahead and get on our Kali distros. Um, if you don't have Kali distro, there is, uh, if you have a Debian based distro, there is the Pentesters Framework PTF. That's really nice. The same people that made the Pentesters Framework made the Social Engineering Toolkit. And um, if you have any Ubuntu uh, or Debian based system, I should just say Debian based system, uh, you can get the PTF and basically grab a whole bunch of tools, but I'm not gonna go over that right now. There's also Katulin, uh, K-A-T-O-O-L-I-N, if you want that too. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna open up Social Engineering Toolkit, and enter. All right, boom, we got this popped up. So let's follow along with me here. It's super simple to do. We're gonna hit one for Social Engineering Attacks, two for Website Attack Vectors, and three for credential harvester attack method. Bam. Okay? We all there? We following along? This really does feel like a Mr. Robot type tool. It's I mean, too it, easy. It, it's too easy. It's too easy. And I mean, combining this with DNS poisoning and you know all of that, you can set up malicious websites on a network that could be face B O O O K or you know with one extra O. You know, this is how phishing emails are made. This is how phishing email sites are started out. Don't go doing this, but it's important to see the tools of the trade if you ever become an ethical hacker, white hat penetration tester. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit up the site cloner. That's one I really like. Um, you can go ahead and hit enter here. Remember the IP address that it shows you, that for me, 10.52.246.175. You can just hit enter and it will accept that. That's your IP on UC's network. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna do like HTTPS. Uh, let's do www.linkedin.com. That's what I can do. You guys can do any website you want. So y'all should pick out a website that you want. Facebook.com, that has a login page. A lot of these have login pages. Um, I think Gmail. It's, it's hard because they have that redirect after you enter your email, redirects to enter your password. So they got smart. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. And it's cloning. And it says, okay, you know, it's up. So now what we can do, I can go over here if I can see my screen. And this is the result. I don't know if you can read that up there, but this is my um, IP of my computer. And let me see if I can do this side by side here, that'd be cool. All right, there's my mouse pointer. Oops. So there's the LinkedIn page. And let me grab this guy. And we're gonna, I cannot read that for life of me. Let's move it over here. We're gonna move this to workspace one. Come on. Come on. Very finicky. With just this. So you can see it, it says we got a hit. We got a um, little response here showing us that someone has connected. And then you can basically go in here and say my email is, it's aj at gmail.com. I know you can barely see that. And password, you know, something random. Never. Never. And if we scroll down here. My goodness. That is where it is. And right now, I don't have the password enabled. Uh, oh, here it is, actually. Yep. Shipu. 
I don't know why, why that came to my mind, but that's the password. So as you can see here, this is, uh, it's very simple. It's literally opening up uh, SC Toolkit and hitting one, enter two, enter three, enter, and then two, and then a, pass, like a website, and then boom, you got it. So have you guys followed along? You guys have seen that? It's cool, it's simple. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a little fun, um, I guess, little exercise here. So I want everybody to find a partner, one partner, a person that they don't know, someone new, okay? And then come up to me and I'll hand you guys a sheet of paper. And this is a social thing. And I'm gonna hand you a piece of paper and neither of you are gonna let the other person look at it. And neither of you can tell each other what this piece of paper says. But you are to do what's on the piece of paper, okay? Alright. You want to look at the one that you don't hand him and don't let him see it. Who's your partner? Uh, Since I kind of know what the one is, you can pair with Jason. Yeah, you're going to pair with him. Because I already know what the exercise is. It's kind of spoiled. Wait, who's your partner, dude? I don't know. Who's your partner? Well, no one knows who you're trying to do. Cool. Yeah, you need to do this exercise. Which partner? Just stay on the board. This is completely different. Oh! This is, this is different. This is an in-person And don't, don't like start doing this or looking at it or telling anybody about this until like everyone has one. Just give him one I'll give you mine. Are you with him? Okay. Cool. Marissa? Who's your partner? Do you want to get a partner? You don't want to do it. Okay. All right. Does everyone have a partner here? We all have partners? Yes? No? I mean, you guys? You guys can come up here and get a slip. You're heading out? Okay. Jack? Hey. I, I know what this is, so I feel like... You want to do it? I feel like I... All right. So, those of you that got the slips, flip them over, read what they are. And you have like, I'll give you guys like five, ten minutes, and then afterwards, everybody who uh, has the slip that reads instructions at the top, come up to me. So go ahead, and you got your 15 minutes starting now. 15 minutes to do what? Read what's on the slip. Well, not do it. You just never know. You can't go over it. So, what did you say? 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 What I never seen this I'm <laughs> 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 
I I can't do that. Well, you can you can switch it over. Maybe yeah. Yeah. Hmm? No, it's the the computer fell asleep. Yeah. Huh. I I originally before these the official ones came out, I got a really cheap one and it was basically like this thing came off within about a day. It, it, it looked and I was like, how is this a patch? It wasn't really like glued in place, it just sort of popped in. And I could pop it back in and still use it, but it's like you want to like this one pop out. <laughs> All the wheels they were clicky for about a bit for like between a day and an hour, depending on which wheel you're talking about, and then they were just brief spinning basically. <laughs> Something's wrong with the presentation thing, but I think it doesn't matter. I'm fine, so I'm back to it. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll just do this.
this man already a lot of years. He's he's finally. Yeah. That should be enough time. Bro. That should be enough time. I remember when I was a kid. That was freshman freshman year, not junior year. It's okay, they can't, there's no camera on this way, so they can't see that you're pointing at them for a moment. The thing is, is I don't know what you want to do. Hi, Mr. President. How long is the man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
Yeah. Put you on the notification list. list. You can like buy. Uh, we we actually we set up a channel. Who's that? Yeah, the. Nobody acknowledges it. Also, some people in our contact are interested. So. Yeah, I mean, we'll know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so well done. I don't know. Have we even put together the side of the match for some people? We're watching Blazing Saddles. All right. I really say for that. Yeah. Oh. So that's kind of a So. Thing. It's not official or anything. <laughs> No, but I, we, I think we're going to try at this point. After uh, everybody yeah. with, let's see, directions, follow me outside. Oh. Oh. Bye. Bye. Sounds like a great episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it's a show by it's on Netflix and it's it's like sort of dystopic futures and technology. Every episode is like a completely separate Something story. Something terribly wrong. <laughs> it's like it's like yeah, some future where they've got some like crazy technology and it's but it's sort of like the technology has sort of negative consequences that were anticipated. And it's uh, being a, a future where you can hack people and get signed for you. Pretty crazy. <laughs> watch that show. It sounds interesting. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's. Um, you want to waste two weeks? The, the first episode you'll so either find hilarious or really offensive, like, depending on what kind of person you are. So you might start with the second. Really just just right that would be crazy. So, uh, it's like yeah, everyone has one. Episodes. But yeah, like an no, example of an episode is like the one where everyone has a camera in their eye and they can like it's always recording and they can watch back things. Which sounds really great, but then it shows like a, uh, uh, a husband or a wa and wife who are like disputing things and they keep rewatching clips of each other. And she's like, "Show me the clip from your thing. Like, let me see what you were doing last night." That's pretty hot. Sounds like a really good episode. Yeah, yeah, it's the whole show is, is great. Yeah, but, uh, okay. on Netflix, there's like three seasons now. Is he saying the same stuff? Yes. <laughs> I do, I do, but I don't. Okay. <laughs> I'll remember that when you want to watch the movie. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see who's allowed to stay and who's not. Alright. Bye, bye directions. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye, guys. bye again. We have till six we have till seven thirty. We have till seven thirty. They're gonna be in around outside. Get everything down. <laughs> Get it on a notepad and get ready. Okay? okay. So Let's find go. everything you possibly can out about that person from what they told you. Oh, you good? I can't. I can't. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, AJ. I'm wondering there. which group is which. He knows a couple of people who are intersect world class that also want to talk about what they're doing stuff, so I have to do that too. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's cool. I'm down. That's it. How many of you guys are actually doing this? Are you doing it? You gotta leave? Yeah. Um, can I say five minutes? AJ. AJ, what's Ryan's password? AJ, what's Ryan's password? You fucking walk out. I got no clue. <laughs> you I got walk no out clue. before you walk out. <laughs> yeah. So. You should tell him it's a bad habit. It's a uh, few people two. from uh, trying to help you <laughs> out. You get home with one. Yeah. Look at that Facebook status update. You. You. Yeah, so I, I'm sorry, man. I'll, I'll try to make this quick. Yeah, I just I at least want your your counterpart partner to you know get the full uh, experience. I think this is a cool activity. This is something that I got from uh, from Vicki Baker. She went to a cybersecurity conference, and they did this. And uh, they said some people were just kind of like blown away with what other people were able to find well, out about them just from a uh, like, conversation. We should have so passed like wow at the start of the meeting and just yeah. had people mingle around. Yeah, yeah, we that could have been a cool way to go about it. Yeah, we could have done that. That way, like, nobody, because everyone all already knows, like, 
kind of, well, you could make a guess as to what the other person is based on who you are and the topic we're going over today. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That'd probably be a better thing. Maybe. Yeah. We can, that might be something to do next time. It would be something to do in, in the future, yeah. Or if we go like person by person. We could do this at high schools. Yeah, we could do this at high schools too. Yeah, we could go over like social engineering and then like have like a lunchtime. Yeah, and, and then you've got, you got two instruction people like yeah. Come together. Yeah. And the two people who are like have an idea of what the instruction people are supposed to be, but they're the directions people and they're together and they're super suspicious. Yeah. If, if you if you do have to go, I mean, as long as you could just kind of write down something, the facts or something that I could show to Grace. Uh, yeah. uh, no idea. Does Ryan have a Facebook page? I got to look him up. At his age, he probably does. It's an old people social media now. <laughs> <laughs> it age. is. But yeah. Savage. I have one. So do I. No, but like it, apparently their uh, most active users are all between the ages of uh, like 40 and 60 now. Mm -hmm. It's like from all of the news articles you read, it's like you couldn't manage to access the current. Yeah, with the massive building in the library. Yeah. Like, no, 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 I read it on Facebook. That's I know it's not fair. It's not really interesting. He showed me a picture, and it was a different building, but which I was over it. It didn't even have the same number of floors. I just told my I can't do this. You can't do it? His last name is O'Connor, which is like a really popular last name. I mean, did you get anything else from him from your conversation? No, I, I, I just got a little suggestion. I forget, how do you get like the Google file and all that stuff? If I had his phone number, I could probably uh, look up his name. You can look up his phone number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, you send it to me, let me see it. Yeah, do, you need <laughs> do you know his phone number? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Vince. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you can pull it. I don't need it. Right, we can leave here for up here now. Okay, did you enjoy tonight? Yeah, it's all Okay, cool. I hope it was interesting. Yeah, that's Oh, yeah, no, hey, I can give you access to the server UC YouTube account. Yeah, that'd be super. Yeah, Jai. Jai, you have the. Um, uh, YouTube credentials, right? Uh, it's open source or public affairs committee. Can, can you send us to Hayden? Are you the public affairs? Huh? No, no, he, he's just running our live stream. So. I know, but are you the public affairs uh, Slack channel? I am not. All right, this is private. So maybe you, you can invite me. Whatever. What's your Slack name? It's, uh, I think it's just Hayden Chip or Chip I or something. It's Hayden Chip. All right, I'm going to go meet the other group outside. Guys, we got like. 15 seconds or 30 seconds left. We're gonna go. Make sure you can compile them and wow them. But what do you think of the memes? I really like that. I think I'm gonna come back next week. Yeah, well, we'll get more in depth on like more technical things. Okay, cool, thanks. That's the only thing I want to tell you. You hear a lot of I don't know what you can do it. Dude, I, I don't even want to know what's in my likes right now just because of how long I'm going or how old my Facebook is. And the fact that I haven't actually liked anything on it since I was like 12. <laughs> cool. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll go in there. I'll go more in How much more of that? I've got like never shot like my Facebook. We can really in depth stuff, but a lot of times I'll like keep it probably have you know, uh, yeah, high level so where anybody can come in. They don't need to be hacker extraordinaire. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what's the room when you're out of yeah, yeah, we have a CTF team. <laughs> uh, we go to any CTF to be fine, but just go to our Yeah, I mean, uh, we're probably going to go to B side <laughs> yeah. CTF yeah. and B side this, which I need to believe that they need to be there at least yet, or they have tickets out yet.
Um, we're going to try to go to uh, DEF CON CTF eventually. Um, uh, Derby CON CTF. So there's a lot, a lot to do. Uh, if you know of any CTFs that you're interested in going on that maybe it's not on our radars, let us know. And let's get some guys together, guys and girls. You need to see if we can get a discount for these guys. Dude, yeah, I know Coleman came. We can do that. All right, guys, we're going to grab the group. Are okay. you okay? So there's another group that still has their gap in there, and so we've got to get them cleared out. Bro, I'll just go but in, like, throw down, and I'll be like, whoever wants to come get it. Yeah, 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 yeah no, that would, that would, that would, if I was the school, that would be my stuff. I'd be like, your shit's going out the door. If you don't get it in a week, I'm throwing it away. Yeah, if you don't get it by the end of the day, janitorial's going to clean it up. Alright, your partner had to leave early. Uh, I have, have stuff. Alright, so, uh, I mean at this point, I'll go ahead and just let you know what the exercise was. Um, actually, I'll let everyone's partner know what the exercise was. So, go to your partner and uh, tell them what was up and Give him the D-Lo. You can't hack So what'd you find out? Get out of here. You, oh, yeah. you should ask for my little kids. Get out of here. You're supposed to find information on the wall. Get a hack. 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 Get Okay, so my, dad dad was was my dad was the one who. Uh, what did he get on you? Yeah. 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 What did he get on you? This is the one who got me to the Marshall's Yeah, he was all that chill. They don't take the status. Yeah, that's got nothing to do with the military. Well, yeah, that's what Apparently, my name was forgettable. Yeah. It was just yeah. Yeah. You could just tell he was just. But you, you were also a hacker. You gave him a hack. You told me that you were not a promise. But you weren't hacking. You were like. You See, that's that's why I was proposing to AJ. Like, we don't, we don't just break him into pairs. Like, why don't we tackle one of the pairs? You pass it on like ahead of time at random. And then you have people mingle. There is no problem with that one. Alright guys, so we all now know what the little exercise was. Does anybody want to share their thoughts? You were the mastermind and these were your minions trying to hack us. 
They're your bot. Oh, they're my botnet. Yeah, you yeah. they gave out the did, papers. Did, did anybody? <laughs> did anybody? I'm the master search engine. Did anybody uh, find out anything or hear anything that they didn't experience. expect to be found? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ryan's got some hot sisters. Oh, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got me. Got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I figured I'd, I'd go after you. So that Ryan pays partner. for likes on SoundCloud. Oh! <laughs> no! <laughs> Any, anybody else? Anybody else? AJ, I, I went after you since I didn't have a partner. I, I found uh, you linked to a SoundCloud. It looks like you've deleted the account now. I'm dying to see what your first two mixes of many to come are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Check, check his other account. Are you sure? To... Check his other account. <laughs> check that other account. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Well, uh, that was kind of a social engineering like run through, just to give you a little glimpse into like how much information can be extracted from you. Uh, just in a casual conversation um, and kind of like I guess what to look for if that's happening. Uh, I hope it also gives you guys a little glimpse into how much can actually be found out about you guys online. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy what, what you can find about people and um, I don't even think we gave you guys all the tools that you could have used to go all the way. There's a, if you want to look up something it's called the harvester. The harvester .high. It's a it's a GitHub project, it's open source, and I believe it's completely for the purpose of just finding out information from everything from people or domains, what have not. Um, we could talk about that tool another time if you guys would be interested in, we could maybe do a little tech demo next week. But um, anyway, uh, I hope all of you enjoyed, and what if we have any last announcements? Does anyone have any last announcements? We We're watching know. Blazing Saddles after the meeting if anyone wants to see it. Yeah, yeah, Blazing Saddles. And then um, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be another outreach at the end of the month. Yeah. In March we probably won't have a whole lot of warning about it because we're still waiting for confirmation. And we also are gonna do another outreach in April. We're gonna go back to uh, Lakota, Lakota uh, East. East. We're gonna go back there. So if any of you are interested in going and trying to talk to high schoolers and get them on their way about cyber security. Uh, and you see. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming out tonight. I hope you enjoyed your guys' first meetings. I hope there's something useful in it for you. And, uh, you know, next week, I think we're going to be continuing on with what exactly, Chris? What are, you, what are we covering next week now? What's next? Let's see. Cover more tools and depth. We we're not covering anything next week because it's spring. Oh, break. not next. Yeah, we're not meeting next week. <laughs> we're gonna meet after we come back from spring break. So yeah, I hope everybody has a great spring break. Is anyone going anywhere cool? Anyone going anywhere? Doing anything yeah, this year? No. Ultra Miami. Let's go. What are you doing? A oh, week after spring break. Home? Cool. Anybody else yeah. going anywhere cool? Alabama. I'm going to share no go. I'm going Alabama. to share no go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Cape That's fine. Let's go. So hey, hey, say hi to me at Chernobyl. I'm staying here. Uh, I'm dying to hear those mentions. Where are they, man? They're good. They're on my SoundCloud. They're on it. The link doesn't work anymore. Did you change your username? Yeah, I mean, we can try work. Like, oh, that's Twitter. ancient. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you might want to delete one of your first speeches sure at your you high school successful. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I have a lot of friends. <laughs> you might want to go back and see. I, I was a. Uh, yeah, they need to link. Yeah, the staff is just good. I was like, I'm going to do this for this. I find really cool things and stuff like that. I'm not. I'm not. Embarrassed about my history. Yeah, yeah, looks like this. <laughs> That's all I do. It's uh, well, technically, it's actually on YouTube. It's a I'm taking a hug. You're a hug. You're a hug. Otherwise, you're a damn hard person to find. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you've got. I keep. We don't even have like friend requests allowed on your Facebook account. I noticed. Don't get your snacks, boy. <laughs> Not only can I not see your posts, I can't even ask to see your posts. <laughs> I do not like Facebook. I should delete my Twitter when it's brand. I give up deleting my Twitter and making a new one. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's not like you have anything like super precious there, it looks like. There's no account.